Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Max Publitz, and I'm a part of Team Cambridge Technology Self-Diagnosing Machines. Firstly, I would like to introduce our technical directors, Jeremy Burke and Ali Galachi. Jeremy is a senior electrical engineer and Ali is a systems engineer at Cambridge Technology. Both have been crucial to the success of this project. The team for Cambridge Technology is composed of myself, electrical and computer engineer, Nisai Men, electrical engineer, Brandon Landano, electrical engineer, and Max Mueller, computer engineer. Brief overview of Cambridge Technology. Cambridge Technology, a Novanta company, designs, develops, and manufactures leading edge laser beam steering solutions and is the inventor of galvanometer based optical scanning technology. Now, what is a galvanometer? A galvanometer, or galvo, works similarly to an electric motor for this application, but originally they were used for measuring electric current. Electric current flows through the coil, which generates a magnetic field. This field acts against the permanent magnets in the device and thus the coil twists and spins. Project motivation. Galvanometer-based scanning systems are integral in very demanding applications such as laser additive manufacturing and medical imaging. In these spaces, the system must be able to complete the job without failing. We want to use machine learning to analyze galvanometer health, classify failures, and predict usable lifetime. The anticipated best outcome, ABO, is a fully working CON hardware fault detection and classification algorithm. The system must be capable of detecting a fault when it has occurred and transmit that information to the classification system. The classification system will then classify the type of fault experience. Should the team accomplish these ABO, the ideal outcome would be a prototype that can continually calculate the expected life of the Galvo. Technical accomplishments this semester. Simulation. A three-state Galvo was first simulated in Simulink to generate test data. The simulation outputs position, velocity, and current of the Galvo. Fault detection. We decided on using parameter estimation to detect if there is a fault. Using this method, the Galvo data goes through a recursive least squares function and a PCA whitening filter. PCA whitening. Randomly generated data with mean invariance is put through a PCA whitening filter to center the data. Classification. We decided that K-metoids would be the best classification algorithm to cluster data into corresponding groups. Economic impact. Predictive failure analysis will position Cambridge technology further ahead of competitors and lay the groundwork for future innovation. Yield will be increased by identifying good and bad galvos in the factory before they are built in scan heads. Rework time will be reduced by determining failure modes to return products for targeted repair. The first step for galvo health monitoring is galvo data, the data good or bad provided by the galvo. At this stage in the project, this is accomplished with a combination of Simulink and MATLAB. In order to generate this data, a simulation was created. This simulation was made using the state-based model of the three-state galvo which was then used to model the Galvo and Simulink. A controller was also implemented, initially using a Leuenberger observer. However, this was eventually swapped to a Kalman filter. Lastly, MATLAB code was created to perform multiple iterations of the simulations. The three-state model of the Galvo is derived from electrical and mechanical dynamics of the system. The Galvo model is governed by three equations of motion, one for the electrical dynamics and two for the mechanical dynamics. These equations relate torque constant, linear friction, back EMF, resistance, and inductance to position, velocity, and current. It should be noted that this is angular position and velocity. The Galvo was then designed and simulated using the aforementioned model. The simulation uses a series of integrators and adders to compute position, velocity, and current. The initial input, U, is a voltage input to the Galvo. Galvo parameters are also included, such as KT and R. However, there are additional inputs, R change and KT change, for instance, that alter the nominal values of the parameters. A controller was then designed for the Galvo. Initially, a Leuenberger observer was used, as shown here, which also computed the estimated position, velocity, and current. The input here is also a step function. This was changed in later versions to a Kalman filter as noise is added to the system, and the input was changed to a random number generator. MATLAB code was generated to run through multiple iterations with the ability to change Galvo parameters on each iteration. Position, velocity, and current for each run was saved to a file. Remaining key technical accomplishments before April 15, 2022. K-metoids clustering will need to be implemented in C for use in hardware. This is more of a challenge as a current implementation is in MATLAB, and thus there are many functions available, which will not be the case for C. Many of the functions necessary to run K-metoids clustering will need to be created in order to achieve this ABO. Implementing recursive least squares and principal component analysis will have similar challenges as K-metoids, as they are also implemented in MATLAB. This will again require custom functions to be created in which I shall assist in implementing. Lastly, 
Now in good and bad data will need to be generated in hardware. This will require the use of functional and broken galvos in order to train filters. I now leave you to Brandon Landano, who will talk about his recursive least squares implementation. All right. The second step in the Galvo health monitoring is recursive least squares. As you can tell from the last slide, during the fall semester, I worked on the recursive least squares algorithm. In the beginning of the semester, me and another group made research fault detection algorithms and made pros and cons of each of them. We ended up choosing the strongest two contenders, and one of them was the recursive least squares, which is what I worked on. Throughout the, the semester, I implemented least squares with random data, as you can see by the graph on the right. The graph on the right has three things plotted. The simulated output, which is the red line with the small dot being each point, and the estimated output. That is also the red line, but with the big circle for each point. As you can see, the estimated output is pretty much equal to the simulated output. I was able to get the estimated output by using the least squares algorithm with the simulated input and output to get the system parameters. Using the system parameters data with the simulated input, I was able to estimate the output. Now the blue line here is just the simulated output with noise. So as you can see, it's just a bit off from the estimated and the simulated. That's because the noise um, that I put on the MATLAB code is you know very small. But if I were to make it into a higher value, then you know it would look uh, very different compared to the other two. I also made progress on least squares for the simulated Galvo data. When it comes to the key technical accomplishments that I need to make towards achieving the ABO before the end of the spring semester, I need to finish least squares with the Galvo data, get the recursive least squares running on C hardware, and make the recursive least squares compatible with other teams algorithms. Hopefully by the end of the spring semester, I'll be able to show you all this and even more. Now I'm going to hand it off to my roommate, Nee Simon, to tell you about the next step in the Galvo Health monitoring. Thank you, Brandon. The next step in the Galvo Health monitoring flowchart is the principal component analysis whitening filter. Using this, we are able to separate good and bad data. The good data is generated when a Galvo is healthy, while bad data is generated when something is wrong with the Galvo. The bad data is then sent to the k medioids classifier to determine what's wrong. To get to the point of a working filter, Brandon and I researched many different fault detection algorithms. With the guidance of our technical directors, we ended up using recursive least squares alongside a PCA whitening filter. This figure here is showing the randomly generated data in red and the whitened data in blue. The whitened data is centered, has zero mean, and makes the covariance the identity matrix. So now we can take the z-score of the data, and if it's greater than three or outside of that spiral, then we can consider it to be bad data. This next figure is showing the principal component analysis part of the filter. It reduces the dimensions of the randomly generated data, thinning out the amount of unnecessary data while retaining about 90% of the relevant data. The blue dots are the randomly generated data and the red X's are a lower dimensional representation of the randomly generated data. This can save computing time and computing power. Some key technical accomplishments to achieve before April 15th of next spring would first be able to differentiate the good data from the bad. I already know how to do it, so I just have to implement it now. Next would be to create the PCA whitening filter in C on hardware. This will be quite the challenge since I use some MATLAB functions when creating the filter. And since all of our respective algorithms or functions work together, I will help assist in merging them all together. Now I pass it on to Max Mueller to talk about his classifier. The fourth step in the Galvo Health monitoring is the K-Medoids classifier 
which will determine what kind of faults we are getting from the bad data. This was implemented in MATLAB to cluster the given data into known faults. Extensive research has been done on classification algorithms, and we decided that k-metoids is the best classification method for our project. This method of classification is preferred over the k-means algorithm because it uses the Mihalinobis distance metric when assigning points to given clusters. This distance metric assigns points by taking the shortest distance from the data point to each cluster while considering the covariance of each point within the data set. This allows us to create more consistent clustering assignments when classifying the data. A best k function was also used for k-metoids, which identifies the optimal number of clusters to create using a silhouette criterion clustering evaluation. To achieve the anticipated best outcome, k-metoids must be implemented in C. This is a difficult task since C does not offer any built-in functions for classification, but with some help from the team, this task should be manageable. The k-metoids classifier would then be merged with the recursive least squares and the PCA whitening filter functions. If all goes to plan, then the fault detection and classification should identify broken galvos and what exactly is broken on the galvo. As a team, we must implement the fault detection algorithms and hardware, which includes recursive least squares and the principal component analysis filter. The team must also implement a classifier to cluster and classify the Galvo failures, which in turn can develop lifetime metrics for the Galvo life expectancy. Overall, we are very confident that the fault detection and classification algorithms can be implemented in hardware, but have a lower confidence level for developing lifetime metrics. We want to give a huge thanks to our technical directors, Jeremy Burke and Ali Kalopshi, alongside Cambridge Technology for sponsoring this year's Capstone project. They both have been of tremendous help for us during our endeavors for this project. We would also like to thank Dr. Sudnak for organizing the Capstone projects and Mike Smith for being of assistance during this project.